attraction and it usually is but we know about these two narcissistic relationships and in fact a lot of us had parents that we identify as a two narcissist relationship in my research what I discovered and even from my own experience what I have found is that these two narcissistic relationships are actually fairly common and in a lot of ways they are the only relationship that really could stand the test of time first of all they have to be two different kinds of narcissists they have to value different kinds of things. And um, so, you know, that's just where we get into the somatic versus the cerebral. So one identifies with being intelligent, having a good education, that kind of step. Another one identifies with being uh, attractive, uh, uh, sexually seductive, uh, you know, physically, have a physical prowess, something like that. So, so uh, this would be, stereotypically, this would be like the successful guy and the you know, the beautiful woman, you think of Donald Trump and Melania as a perfect example of what this two narcissist relationship would be like. Another thing that happens is, which is very typical, is that there is an inverted narcissist. An inverted narcissist is someone who is narcissistic, like they're very self-absorbed, but they don't, they lack the confidence or something to really outwardly act like a narcissist. So they're very attracted to overt narcissists because it's the shadow side of themselves. It's the, it's the, it's the part of themselves that they've kind of had to leave behind and, uh, and, they, and they, they kind of admire or want to be more like that. They live sort of vicariously through the overt narcissist. And what I found through my own parents, in fact, is that this can change over time. So an inverted narcissist, which is what I believe my mother was, um, can attach to an overt narcissist, which is what my father is, and over time become more overt herself. What, why I say that it's sometimes the only relationship that could actually stand the test of time is because they will get into, it won't, it won't be love that holds them together. It'll be this uh, competition uh, against other people. It'll kind of be a you and me against the world kind of a thing, and together they can keep the fantasy going. They have, all narcissists have a story they're telling, and usually with an empath, they're, they're mutually telling a story of how great the narcissist is and all that kind of stuff. It's rarely about how loving and wonderful the empath is. Usually it's about the narcissist. But in the two narcissist relationship, they can keep the story going of uh, how successful they are, um, how what wonderful parents they've been, what wonderful children they were to their uh, their parents, and all of this stuff, and they can be the keeper of the stories. So over time, they they keep the fantasy going of their of their shared narrative, and so this can be uh, if if you are a child of a narcissistic couple, this can be one of the things you notice is that the story that they tell is that you were, the, you know, if you were scapegoated, you were the difficult one and they were really wonderful parents and they will keep this true for each other because no one is, no one is a truth teller. No one is um, committed to, you know, committed to reality. Both of them are committed to the story over all else. And a lot of times they will, they will stay together because the story goes that they are this happy couple and that people get divorces are losers and we don't get divorced because we we stay together they also both fear abandonment they all has they both have a, a huge fear of abandonment so they will attach to each other and their story they get so insulated with each other and maybe a small group of people that they really can't and they can't go outside of that too far and they really don't you'll notice that these narcissistic couples that stay together for the duration really don't have a big circle of people that they're around. Um, they might have maybe another couple similar to them that they hang around with, but usually friends are, friends come and go, friends get cut off, um, and a lot of times they're not very close to even family members, they're not very close to a lot of people. A lot of people get excluded from them, and because they will, they will um, reinforce their grudges, they will reinforce that each other's right for doing what they're doing. They'll take each other's side. Um, and But behind closed doors, there will be a lot of arguing, a lot of fighting, because they will also compete. They will also, not like they would if they were the same kind of narcissist. That's, that's for sure they won't do that. 
but they will um, they will be they will be self-centered and so the reason that narcissists and narcissist relationships would break up and the reason that they um, they that they would break up if they're especially the same kind of narcissist is because there'll be a shortage of narcissistic supply and so that, that won't be interesting to them but if there are different kinds of narcissists they can actually keep the narcissistic supply going quite well in fact the way Sam Vaknin uh, describes it is he would say that that the a narcissist might care for his partner his narcissistic partner like one would care for a fine art collection it'll be like that it'll be sort of objectified like a prized possession and so that's the kind of love that it is and also it's important to remember a couple of things one is the narcissist doesn't have a lot of self-awareness most narcissists don't really know what they are they don't really know exactly what's making them tick and a lot of times they will be relationships that started early early on there'll be relationships that started before they were a fully developed narcissist and a lot of times also the narcissism will develop together with them that I know of personally I know of several narcissistic couples that started as teenagers and have and are now going out 50 some years of marriage the ones were really dysfunctional and um, and overtly so um, mine were not so overtly so but definitely from behind closed doors were were dysfunctional and it took me a long time in my later life to figure out what was going on this two narcissists can definitely come together in a relationship and a lot of times it can be successful and last the duration the cool thing is of course they, they they combust quickly because they will they won't be able to manipulate a narcissist the same way they won't be able to um, you know test the boundaries they won't have all the attraction to them the way that we would to an empath and that kind of thing so it's not it's not as common and it also doesn't it doesn't run the same uh, course of abuse cycle that it does with an empath and together they will usually scapegoat by someone else typically one of their children um, but at least one of their children they, they probably will do it with several people over the course of a lifetime together successful successful and if you consider successful meaning they stay together if that's what you consider success um, they this is a common thing and they're very dysfunctional but they do I have seen I have known personally in my own life several that that have you know lasted the duration and uh, and so it does definitely happen and and this is this is how and this is why Share with me in the comments if you know any narcissistic you know if you know of a two narcissist relationship and how you think it works for them but I would love to hear about it okay thanks a lot I'll talk to you later bye bye I'd like to know your point.